The following video will illustrate the new pump test procedures. All DFR engines must be tested every year to maintain compliance with NFPA standards. All pump tests will be conducted at the draft tank manifold on the east side of the maintenance building at Dolphin Road. This is just outside the building near the gas pumps. When you arrive, notify the shop and they'll send Robert Coker out to assist in the process. It's important to note that the mechanic is only responsible for direction, oversight, and assistance in documentation. The bulk of the work will be conducted by DFR operations personnel who will directly assist the mechanic in conducting the test by laying the necessary hoses and responding to his direction. Before you start, make sure your engine fuel tank is full. It's also critical to follow all safety standards at all times including the proper donning of hearing and eye protection and ensuring the apparatus wheels are chalked at the necessary times. Next, locate all your tools. The shop should have these readily available. Check your primer before hooking up. If the primer is inoperative, stop and notify the shop. You cannot continue with the test at this time. Next, remove both 5-inch intake valves and check for the strainers. If the strainers are missing or damaged, get the shop to replace them. You cannot proceed and should never pump without strainers as this can critically damage your apparatus. Cover the 5 inch intake valves with the caps provided and tighten with a dead blow hammer. Anytime you use this hammer, be careful not to damage nearby handles or gauges. Now remove all the discharge caps as well as both auxiliary suction caps. Open all the drains and drain the pump completely. It's important to empty the pump completely. It's now time to cover all the discharges and intakes on the pump panel with the blue EMS gloves you carry. This will help you identify if a valve is pulling a suction. Inspect the dual test gauges and be sure they are serviceable. Remove the screws from the test ports on your pump panel. Notice how they are marked as this will affect your gauge placement. Utilize Teflon tape to wrap the threads and install the proper ports. They're clearly labeled. Make sure all of the fittings are tight. Your engine is now ready to begin the vacuum test. The dry vacuum test begins by engaging the electric or air primer until the vacuum gauge reads 22 inches. If you're unable to pull any vacuum, there's a leak somewhere. Check to ensure all your valves are closed. Once you've reached 22 inches on your gauge, look for gloves that are sucking into the discharge piping or gloves that have popped. This is an indication of a bad valve. Cap it and make a note that it needs to be repaired. You may continue testing at this time. Once you've capped and eliminated leaking valves, it should keep its vacuum. A slow leak may be a bad pump packing just make a note of it. Record the start and stop times and the initial and final vacuum numbers. To pass the vacuum test, the pump must not drop more than 10 inches in a 5 minute period. If the engine fails the vacuum test, you cannot proceed with the other tests. Notify the engine shop supervisor and follow his directions. The next series of tests are flow and draft tests. These are several tests that have identical procedures but different measurement parameters. You'll begin with the 100% pump capacity test. Start by removing the cap from the driver's side 5 inch and connect the hard suction hose to that intake. Tighten by using the dead blow hammer on the handles, being careful not to damage surrounding handles and gauges. You'll use this suction configuration for the rest of the tests connect all four of the two and a half inch hoses to the engine discharges. There are two on the rear and two on the officer's side pump panel. Verify that all the other discharges are closed and capped. Install the two and a half inch tip on the pitot gauge discharge and install it on the test pit manifold. It's time to place your engine in pump gear. Start it up and make sure your wheels have been properly chalked and verify the pump transfer valve is in volume. This is critical for this test. Increase the throttle to 200 RPMs. Pull the primer handle and hold until you have established a draft. 
water will be visible moving through the hard suction hose and the intake gauge will show pressure once a draft is established. Record how long it took to prime. Ideally, it will take about 45 seconds. Slowly open each test line one at a time, keeping your pump at 100 PSI by adjusting your throttle. Do one last safety check for hearing and eye protection as well as chalked wheels. Verify your relief valve is in the off position. Locate the pump panel plate. This has all the information you need for the testing of your specific pump. Increase the pressure to the number printed on the pump panel plate to get 100% capacity of the pump. You're now in monitoring mode. Record the following information at 5, 10, 15, and 20 minutes. Your discharge pressure, your pitot reading, which should be approximately 68 to 70, your nozzle pressure, and your engine tachometer reading. After you record the 20 minute cycle, shut down your lines and proceed to the next test. The 70% capacity test is very similar to the 100% but with different pressures. First, change the pitot tip out to a 2 inch and reset the pitot gauge. If this is done quickly, you will not need to reprime the pump. Begin the same procedure by opening the line slowly, one at a time. Increase the pressure to the number printed on the pump panel plate to get 70% capacity of the pump. At this time, the pitot gauge should read approximately 75 to 80. Use the chart to determine the flow. Once again, you are in monitoring mode. Record the following information at start, 5, and 10 minutes. Your discharge pressure, the pitot reading, your nozzle pressure, and the engine tachometer reading. Shut down your lines briefly to make changes for the next test. The 50% capacity test is next. Change the pitot tip out to a 1 and 3 quarter inch and reset the pitot gauge. At this time, you must also switch your pump transfer valve to pressure. If this is done quickly, you will not need to reprime the pump. Open the line slowly, one at a time, and increase the pressure to the number printed on the pump panel plate to get 50% capacity of the pump. At this time, the pitot gauge should read approximately 75 to 80. Use the chart to determine flow. You are now once again in observation mode. Record the following at start, 5, and 10 minutes. Your discharge pressure, the pitot reading, the nozzle pressure, and the engine tachometer reading. At the completion of this test, move immediately to the next test. Adjust your pressure to 165 PSI. Again, start your clock and record the following at start, 5, and 10 minutes. Your discharge pressure, the pitot reading, the nozzle pressure, and the engine tachometer reading. Immediately move to the relief valve test. You're nearly done. The relief valve test throttles the engine down to 150 PSI. Turn the relief valve clockwise as far as it will go and turn it on. Slowly turn the relief valve counterclockwise so that you're decreasing the setting until you see it engage. At this point, the open yellow light should be on. Wait about two to three seconds and then slowly turn the knob clockwise until you get back to the 150 PSI mark. At this point, the green light should be on and the relief valve closed. Slowly close all discharges until there's no water flowing and record the pressures on the pump and test gauges. The pressure should not rise more than 30 PSI or it fails. Slowly reopen all of the discharges and note the pressure differential you saw when it closed. Next, reduce your throttle to maintain 90 PSI. Repeat the relief valve test exactly as above but at the 90 PSI setting. Your testing is now complete. Please consult with the mechanic, return all the tools, and make the proper report. Thank you for your cooperation.